Well, they say you don't know what you've got until it's gone, and today I learned that that definitely applies to electricity. So our power went out today. We're in Southern California, so they do these like rolling power outages, and I knew that we depend on electricity for a lot, but I didn't realize just how many things we rely on it for until we didn't have it today. So today has been an exercise in getting creative and trying to make do with what we have. So I thought I would show you some of what's going on over here. So this is one of the really big problems is that, you know, our babies live in incubators when they are neonates. We have this little guy, Spud, who is super tiny. He's only about 200 grams and he needs to be kept at a specific temperature. So um, he's usually in an incubator that's about 88 degrees. But right now the incubator, as you can see, is shut off. Usually if I'm not using an incubator, I'm using a microwavable heat pad, but of course our microwave is also not working because that is powered by electricity too. So what I did was I grabbed a heat pad and I have that under here and then I'm powering the heat pad with this thing. This is a vehicle jump starter. They're actually pretty affordable, but it's not strong enough to power like a microwave or anything like that. Um, it is strong enough to power his heat pad. So I'm glad that we had that and that's keeping him at a good temperature right now. That is one thing that we're doing over here to cope. Good job, Spudly. Now we also need to be able to heat up a bottle for Spud. So I have to do that on the stove. And what I'm doing is lighting the stove manually with a lighter and getting some water close to a boil, pouring it into a mug and then dunking my bottle into the mug until it is nice and warm. Probably power the whole house with the energy from those wiggly ears. Poor Ferguson, his fountain is not running. We won't have that. We can't have a water fountain that's just still water. That's not tasty. Fergie keeps checking all the water fountains and none of them are running. Just gotta drink my boring water. Here's another fun thing that I had not thought about. Our sink in our nursery is on a pump system and the pump requires electricity. That is just lovely. But this is what worries me the most is that this is our fridge full of medications. I don't even wanna open it to show you because I'm trying to keep it as cool in there as possible, but we've not had power for hours now and we have a lot of medications that are temperature sensitive and they need to be in a refrigerator. Um, so this is the biggest problem for us right now. Uh, we gotta figure out how we can get this refrigerator back on. So I have an idea. We bought a generator. Woo. Do I know anything about generators? No. no. Do you? Definitely not. <laughs> so we're gonna try to figure out if a generator can help us with the fridge. Good thing Andrew's really strong, so he can Oof. get this <laughs> out without any help, right? You gotta be ready. It's gonna be very heavy. It weighs more than you. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. Hang on. It feels like. Oh, oh God. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Ready? ready? Ah! There you go. Once the dipstick shows here. What'd you call me? You you heard me. <laughs> You could put some essential oils in here too. I think that's what you're supposed to do. You have lavender or tangerine. So Is it safe to put that in there when there's oil in it? But do we have another funnel? No. I think this has something in it, right? Oh. How does that work? I don't know. Maybe you turn it. Yeah, you probably turn it like that and put the thing back on, right? Oh my gosh. What is this? I didn't even know that gas and oil was not the same thing. So. Yeah, I know you didn't. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna cut that from the video. I wonder if I... It's not flowing. I dinged it. I probably did something bad. 
This has to be a thing though, because why else would it be so long? I don't know. How is someone supposed to hold it? Maybe it's like you have to hold it. Oh. This is so hard. This is like 30 pounds. Do you want me to help? Yeah, I don't think. What should I do? Hold the bottom. Hey guys, we're going to teach you how to use this fuel canister. We've been doing this for years now, so we know all about it. There's a safety on it. You can press. And then you're going to press down on this. Since I want Hannah to build her muscles a little bit, I'm going to let her help me. I'm totally strong enough to do this on my own. But for the purpose of this video, she's going to help me. Tip it down. Oh, it's perfect. Perfect pour. Ish. Here we go. All moment, hard work. moment of truth. Does it work? <gasps> oh my gosh! All of our medicine. Okay, so now I have my generator plugged into this, and I can plug just the essentials in. I've got my fridge, and the incubator is back on. Look at that. We are back online. Feeling fun. Well, it took a while, but we figured it out. And this was a really good reminder. Excuse me, I'm speaking. This was a really good reminder of the importance of emergency preparedness. Come here, honey. When animals are relying on you, you have to have a plan in place for everything that can go wrong. And I feel like today was a good reality check for us that it is really important to be prepared. If you want to learn more about emergency preparation, I have a great video where I interview somebody who's an expert in that. I'm gonna pop it right here, and you can click on that and give it a watch. Woohoo! Our power came back on! Chimpy is having a celebratory drink. Good job, Chimpy. Thank goodness. <laughs>